It is 5.32 p.m. and we will call this meeting to order for the housing, Hudson Housing Trust Fund Advisory Committee. Uh, uh, yeah. We'll get okay. <laughs> um, got Usha. Yes. Rebecca. Yes. Nick. Present, present, Tom, present. Uh, Jeff, yes, Ali, Ali is not present. Got George. Got yeah. home back. Well, well, what's interesting is that whenever uh, Jeff. Jeff says anything, to the gal will fix it. It's George up there, so it's oh. putting George in its own box. There. Yeah. Oh. oh, that's very good. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so. Um, Today is kind of like a discussion workshop -y session, um, just really picking up a lot of like little threads from our last meeting. Um, we don't really have anything that we need to vote on today, but it's going to be a lot of just quick updates from old business and then talking about a couple things in new business to move forward for the year. Um, and just kind of thinking about kind of the goal that we'll probably want to think about a next project to like our project for the year, how to spend money at one of our upcoming meetings. Um, and then the rest of the year is a little bit more of checking how things are going, looking at fundraising, making sure we've got housing trust fund money for future years and budgeting for the following year. Um, so, um, do you want to call for old business? Sure, old business, business quick updates, Hudson Roots. Um, so just so y'all know for Hudson Roots, um, so again, 50000 was our budget for this year. Um, it's about halfway expended so far, which is on track. Normally, December through March are the busiest months needing rental assistance, uh, both in terms of the holidays and when people get sick and tend to fall behind, and also just when leases are up <laughs> and rents are due. Um, so I looked back at like the past three years, and it's been pretty typical that there's a lot more spent December through March, and there's not too much spent October through November. Um, but yeah, so far, um, I left the paper on my desk, but I can email it back to you guys with the numbers set for the year. Um, I you meant April through November, right? I just, no, I meant December through March. But then you said there's a lot less spent October through November, and I just, you meant April through November, right? I'm just trying to. Um, I, so, you're right that I skipped a bunch of months. <laughs> the thing is that like when I was looking at it, it's like a lot are spent December through March, and then like it drops down April through September, and then there's not a lot of requests September through November. Um okay. based on like what I've seen the last two four, three years or so. Um so I apologize, I don't have the exact numbers there on my desk. Um, but I think it's been, I wanna say I think it's been 22 people helped so far this year. Um, I think we only have with rental assistance with them, or Hudson Roots is only with rental assistance. So the way it's defined is pretty broad. It's really anything that helps with like key housing needs. Um, so, so they would pay a security deposit, for example. Yeah, they awesome. would. We needed to know that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, so <clears> far, <throat> it's really only been that rent. That's been the request. And I think there was one security deposit. Okay. But it's pretty much been all that rent. Great. But Hudson Roots, they do more than that, right? So the Hudson Roots is like the funds we're giving to Greater Promise Hudson Neighborhood. And when they do the funds, it's pretty comprehensive that they're really kind of identifying what the issues of the family, if there's other needs going on, who's they're able to access other support, um, everything ranging from like getting people air conditioners or help with the medical need or transportation. Um, and they also are like, they've got, they talk to all the other programs. So for example, DSS, Catholic Charities, St. Catherine's. And so making sure that if there's other funds available, those are used first, um, or sometimes teaming up with those other funds in order to kind of leverage things, the funds the best way they can. So if anybody's interested in those funds, they need to contact Quick, uh, yeah, mm -hmm. John Hunt, the, the main contact. Mm -hmm. So I can email you the exact numbers when we're done. Here. Any other uh, information on that or any questions about that? Trust code donation. 
The update is that we saw the corrected minutes. The donation was $250. Um, so that changed that to the minutes, previous minutes um, from the last meeting. But the donation has officially been <laughs> all the paperwork <laughs> was been filled out. Um, it was it took a while to get all the paperwork for ATPA to accept the funds. Um, Do you think it would be like that? Every no, time there's a donation, or now, is this like this is this the... Is, so the good news is that now we know how to accept money. <laughs> right on. <laughs> we understand the process, the CPI, we have the right paperwork. So and this I want to make sure I heard you correctly, you said $250, right? Okay, yeah. so I'm going to make sure. Yeah, yeah. I thought I missed... We the lost case. a zero. I thought I missed the K or something. No. Okay. <laughs> um, so, we appreciate it, though. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and now we know we have all the paperwork to get more donations. Got it. Okay. Yeah. Got it. Mm -hmm. That's the update. Anything else on that? CDBG Housing Rehab Grant. Um, so our last meeting, you guys voted to dedicate $15,000 to finish out the city's projects. We should be accepted that. Just want to give you an update that that money will probably be expended um, this month or next month. CDBG projects are kind of getting down to their final bits. Um, and so for one of the, there's five projects, one's 100% done, the other four are like between 85 and 100, but that last 15% is a little tricky figuring out the final punch list and what needs to get done. Um, and so just so you know that that, that will be the way it will work. Um, and this is kind of what HCTA's attorney figured out was that basically, um, read the contractor who does the work will like submit the invoice to HCPA and they'll um, sign it off. So they'll send the check there. And we did talk about continuing to fundraise for other grants to kind of replenish that piece. So we'll kind of talk about fundraising goals and the new business. That's the update. Legal aid representation. Just a quick update. So last meeting we talked about how we don't have any related representation. Mm -hmm. The update is in the six weeks that have passed. We still don't, mm -hmm. <laughs> but I've bugged enough people that now I'm hearing back from some people. So the county is actually, like some people in the county are actually like now interested in this topic. Mm -hmm. um, so that I don't have any good news in terms of still haven't found any attorneys who can work here or who are willing to with legal aid, but hopefully by next time we'll have some actual answers the, the, or like pathways to finding representation. Yeah, so basically um there is state money in the budget to provide free legal representation for low income residents facing like eviction. And we don't have any attorneys that through legal aid of Northeastern New York. Um and they don't actually have any attorneys for us. And um, so it's when people are going to court, there's no attorneys who can work um, unless you have money to hire a private attorney. There's no attorneys doing that work. They're what about the people. fair housing officer? Do they get representation? Um, well, they're not attorneys. I know, but I mean, is there an attorney that works for fair housing? No. No? He just shows up, the fair housing officer as himself. And no they work, so they don't have to. Wouldn't it be one and the same person, the legal person, who worked for both? You would think that there would be that would be a good yeah. idea for them to have a lawyer that they can do exactly that, bring to court, do things like that, but they don't. Do you have one for the uh, actually down I do the not. street? No. Well, an attorney, yes, but not not for the residents. Actually, unfortunately, it'll be against the residents for non payment in other cases of that nature. So I wouldn't be a good resource in that case. Housing authority is on the other side of the that's correct. Uh -huh. On the other side of the table. Right. Reluctantly, but we are obligated to do so. Um, you know, sometimes we are correct and the people go wrong. Yeah. Believe yeah. it or not. Yeah. But I, I have I have talked to some people, so the new attorney that I have, I'll, I'll ask him. I'll ask if he has a recommendation, if so, and um, 
And I'll ask some other colleagues, and if, I, if so, I'll uh, present that information to them. Does that mean that legal aid, like the legal aid society, is based in Albany, right? Mm -hmm. And like, so that does that mean they just don't have anyone assigned to Columbia County? Yeah. But they do they have people assigned to other counties? Sure. <laughs> and, and have they said why they don't have somebody? They said they don't have the staffing. So like, I get what you're saying. Like, like, why can't you just like take this person on your caseload, right? If you're already doing Albany or Saratoga or something. But also they were saying to me, it's like we could drive to different courts. I was about to say that. And so yeah, they're it's like- It's probably a logistical issue. They're an yeah. hour away, we're here and- But I, but what I was curious about is like, so, like, so for like, um, I don't know, Dutchess County or mm -hmm. you know, like other counties within the district, Yeah. they do have people? Yeah, like I think they're all really short staffed. So I think that, um, so unfortunately we're not, yeah, we're grouped with Albany, I think like Rensselaer, and I think I think it's like, I don't know, Warren and Saratoga maybe. Um, Cause I tried the Dutchess and Ulster and they said they are not allowed to they can't do Columbia. Um, but yeah, it sounds to me like there was a disconnect and that they didn't even know this was between Columbia County. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think also part of the issue is that they like have such staff turnovers that sometimes there's maybe a disconnect of information being passed. But yeah, when we've, I've heard from like three different people legally, they, they don't have the staffing for us and like they can't drive down to our courts because of their own booked. What about Green County? Or? I think they also cut the Green. I think Green County is grouped in with them. I wonder if if theoretically <clears throat> a magic pot of funding became available for mm -hmm. this, if the course to go would be to hire somebody locally or to still use something like legal aid, give the funding to them because they have the infrastructure and say, okay, well now here's money. Yeah. Yeah. Put somebody towards <clears throat> just a county. Right, but just a point of clarification, you did say that there is the state has money in the budget for. Yeah, and it goes to legal aid. Oh, and then they would have to sign something mm -hmm. like that. Okay. Yeah, I think. So there's money. So who? I don't know. Okay, so like, who would it be like? Who would it be in the city government or whatever that would that would be advocating for, or not the city government, go sorry, the county side. government, yeah. like to be advocating that we that the county should have yeah. legal aid representation. I had a good conversation with Bob Gibson. Um, and he was giving me some, like, he said, Robert Simmons, like, a county attorney, is a good person to talk to. And then also, like, talked to him and Michael um, Chimides, who said, to kind of drop some of the data and bring it to the board of supervisors and, like, put it on their radar. Um, both because I get a lot of calls from people outside of Hudson. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe it's in that, like, among their county attorneys and the board of supervisors, we can get a little more uh, to young path of Columbia County, not just the city of Hudson. Mm -hmm. so, so that's my next step. Right on. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I like you. I think your way of thinking is like correct. There's like two paths here, right? <laughs> of like getting more money. Do something thing. independent yeah. that just serves us, or try to make it happen through the existing channels. Yeah. I would think the way is both. <laughs> yeah. Like then, if there's we found some people here, find some money and hire them for the short term, and then meantime, kind of like not lobby, but advocate for get fixing the system because yeah. if it's a problem county-wide mm -hmm. then county because i know spark of hudson has a small donation state which i think is under ten thousand mm -hmm. for discrete things which this would i imagine be a nice easy application and quick thing mm -hmm. i don't know how long that would cover yeah. legal services for, but that's a perfect use of that funding sources to do it it's a quick application, um, and but it's just a matter of whether there's the infrastructure to pay somebody to do it. Yeah, um, that's great. If you do you speak to your attorney and he has some names of some people who might be interested, that would sure. be great. That's one thing that I ran up against was just like no one could think of people <laughs> who would do this type of representation. So. I should definitely be speaking with them this week. So okay. I'll cool. Thank you. Well, yeah, I do. Um, if there's nothing further on that, Cold Green Board of Realtors. That follow up was when you talked to the last meeting, we talked about maybe you reached out to Cold Green Realtors about just like a Section 8 
voucher info um, in case they're interested. I have not spoken to them. Wanted to follow up if that's something you all are interested in doing still to try and see if more landlords are interested in renting out. That was the conversation where we were trying to brainstorm about like what would be the ways to come at the problem from the landlord angle like yeah so and that was sort of where it landed am i right that, that was one of the things we had on the list was like talking to the realtors talking to the board of realtors yeah i mean i've never spoken to the board of realtors before i wonder like who are they and what what is their um what do, what do they care about or something like that i mean i think among them, there's a lot of different values and personalities. Um, we do have a, a DEI -E uh, committee that's been trying to think more about how to have more inclusive housing options and um, equitable housing options throughout Columbia County. So I think I would start with them. Mm -hmm. um, but that's just if you guys specifically are HHA group um, are interested in like some kind of either just literature or some kind of conversation with them about trying to get more realtors interested. Jeff, that like I, I honestly can't totally recapture what our how our whole conversation went last time about that. Like, was that where we were talking about like should we have an event? <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, that was I think the goal was like finding more. Um, landlords to accept Section 8 vouchers, right? Mm -hmm. And that, is that your memory? Yeah. Okay. And actually, um, thank you for mentioning that, because actually what I want to, one of the things the Housing Authority wants to do is to, we're, we're going to have to do fairly uh, soon, is to bring all the landlords in because they're new inspection protocols. So I would like to do a multifaceted event where I inform them about the protocols, but also try to increase their engagement as well mm -hmm. um, to try to increase, you know, assistance to residents. So this could be. Is a, there like a pool of landlords that you are not aware of that are like? Well, I wouldn't say a pool necessarily. We we, we would deal with who we already deal with, and, and but also put it out there and ask them to kind of tell a friend, tell a neighbor. Yeah. Um, anybody that they know that may be interested um, to tell our program positively uh, and, and ask them to come to the engagement um, meeting so that we can talk to them about, you know, the new protocols as well as why we'll be able to have an active speaker. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And maybe the Board of Realtors could be invited to that event. 100%. 100%. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, yeah. HHA redevelopment updates. Who would like to hear the question? Would that be me? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, right now we are, we've asked several uh, political uh, figures to assist us financially in our uh, endeavors uh, because we're going to have about a $23 million gap um, in funding for creating this new development that is that we're it will be doubled in size and two phase project is about $110 million each each phase um, so we are engaging um, politicians for that we, we have had some answers and they were not positive answers unfortunately um, but we are seeking other methods, and as well as we have our <clears throat> our request into the state um, for uh, technical assistance, and they uh, have given some feedback, which we had to coordinate with the city on, so that information has been sent to the city. Um, and we're waiting for a response from them, uh, as well as you know, we're letting them know that we have we, we we have this funding gap and we need other assistance. But you know, if they if we're not able to get assistance, and we need to let them know that we're working on it, but if we're not able to get an assistance, we're hoping that the state can help us with that. Um, so we will be at the common council meeting next week on the 16th to make a presentation for uh, funding restore grant. Restore grant. That's correct. 
Um, and that will be specifically for demolition uh, because the guidelines are strict. Um, however, you know, anything we get and everything we get will be helpful. So we're moving forward and um, I'm not certain where we've been before because I wasn't here, but it, it appears that we're uh, a little bit further than we've been in the past. Um, and there's a lot of uh, positives going on, so. Uh, who did, who, which politicians did you speak to? Uh, I have spoken to an email as well, uh, Assemblywoman um, Dean Barrett, mm -hmm. Congressman Molinaro. I believe we both also sent a letter to Henshi as well. So we did, and the only person that we, well, we've heard from two people, Molinaro, um, said, hey, you know, we had about 100 folks ask for money and we can only give to 15 and so we're not able to choose you, but please apply next year. And um, Dee Barrett, uh, while they said they couldn't help us directly, they are appealing to Molinaro to assist us in our endeavors. So yes. you're saying the total project would cost, what, 22 million? No, that's, no. that's the gap. Too much gap. Well, uh -huh. no, no. 210, 220 with a gap of financing for about 23 million. All right. Yeah. So it's a two phase project, about 110 million each phase. Got it. Yes, sir. But um, there are plans in place and it looks good. And HUD, actually, I, I should add this I, I've um, sent information to HUD as well, asking them to take a look at our. Uh, a modified request for our project so uh, because they were we were kind of locked into something else um so we're asking them to get on board as well and i and, I, and i'm almost certain that they will uh, because they want solvency and that's what we're what we're pushing for is there any effort to trim the project at all um some of it is going to be driven by the state they may yeah. change some of the numbers um but I don't, I don't, I can't say that we are necessarily going grandiose. I think, yeah. you know, I, I wouldn't say we're doing the bare minimum, but we want to make a nice mm -hmm. project for Hudson and we want it to fit the current landscape. Um, and so, you know, we'll pivot where we need to pivot. Um, but it's going to cost what it's going to cost. Yeah. 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 We, we don't, we don't want it to be a thrown together project. We want it to be sure. lasting. And we're taking advantage of every opportunity we can. There will be applications for brownfield uh, grants. We are going, you know, looking at geo geothermal, um, and, you know, and green energy type of funding, and, and as well as you know, sort of uh, material. So you know, we we're, we're trying to uh, make it a good project. And even <clears throat> currently, even though. <coughs> This may not be directly applicable to the project, but there was an old NICER grant that was not fulfilled. Um, we're in the process of fulfilling that with about 53 refrigerators that are going to go to residents. Um, we've got a partial delivery of that, and we're about to start uh, delivery to the residents. Um, and you know, depending upon how quick the project comes about, we hope to you know move those appliances that, at the very least have them as replacement. Uh, uh, replacement resources, mm -hmm. but it'll, it's a you know they're green and they're they're, they're applicable to today's code. So mm -hmm. for our commission, right, I remember way back when those there. refrigerators were. <laughs> and I wasn't aware of that. Commissioner Smith um, made me aware okay. and, uh, through uh, Mr. Shamidi, who used to be the mayor's aide, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Um, and he gracefully is uh, helping to um, make sure that we, the funding period was extended. Oh, that's get this done. great. Yeah. Cool. So that's it on HHA redevelopment updates. Um, plus one ADU grant. Another follow up. So last meeting we talked about county applied for a grant to make ADUs or plus redevelopment units. Um, it's not been formally announced, but it looks like they received it. However, um, Hudson is not part of it because we don't have ADUs in our zoning code. Mm -hmm. And so part of the state's requirement is in order to receive the funds, you have to have ADUs in your zoning code. Um, that said, we're eligible to apply 
like independently, like without the county, just on our own in the future round. Uh, if we were interested in that, it's supposed to come out probably in November. Um, so that's just an update on that. Well, that could be part of our, the next topic. Yep. Well, what are the, uh, the examples or the, in the park that are down at the waterfront? Or they just those are sauna. Oh, are they? I didn't know I was just down there for the first time in a long time. Yesterday. It's funny that you asked that. It's like, well, I had no idea. ADU, ADU or sauna? Wow. <laughs> are, they, are they active somewhere? Yes. Oh, the two months down there, and they, they've been at Oakdale for most of the time. Okay. I had no idea. I just, like I said, first time down there in a long time yesterday. And I was like, wow. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. I had no idea. I like that. So. <laughs> so it's called Big Towel. If you, there are oh, you know, okay. Big Towel songs. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> on to the next thing on the agenda. Well, uh, comp plan survey? Yeah, so just an update on the comprehensive plan. Um, it's like been um, just getting started in January, February, March. I'm um, going to do like a public launch of everything before probably by before the end of May. Um, so part of that process is the first piece is um, the plan is like producing like an existing conditions report of data of what's going on in Hudson. Um, there's when they're finishing up like getting some comments from like the Common Council and the Planning Board this week and then when that's done I can share like one of the finalized versions. I think they did a really good job with the housing data. Um, but also coming up in May is that we'll be opening up um, the like a survey um, asking residents just how are they feeling about things in Hudson, what are their needs, what's their vision, um, and so one of the things hoping that I can share that with you all so you can spread that to your networks. Um, so we're trying to find different ways of this soft survey like paper online, tabling at different events, um, stuff like that. So as I get that. Um, more information about that, I'll share that with you all. So. Maybe it would help to make clear that the people working on it now are just the consultants. They're the ones compiling all the information. So it's, there's no public real involvement. Israel, in the state of Israel, military, the air force, the police, Hamas, 